Hey, what's up y'all and welcome to this episode of Eddie's Customs and Restorations. I uh, haven't done videos in a while, um, especially not on this one, uh, simply because, you know, there's a lot of work to be done and the editing portion takes a lot of the time, you know, and um, there's, there's just too much editing, you know. You, you take a, a video that was like two hours long and we, I have to cut all that down to about half an hour or something, you know, to where it's not going to annoy people like, man, look at this guy. He just keeps grinding and grinding or whatever, you know. So anyway, uh, I'm going to give kind of like a quick overview of what we've done to the Scout. This is that 71 Scout that we had or that we brought in for, for the complete restoration. Um, this motor came out of a 2013 Sierra 4x4. Um, let's come over here. Right on the side right here, you can tell that obviously those wheels are not stock, right? And obviously these are not too, right? But um, the, pro the reason we had to put these wheels on here right now is because we had clearance issues with our steering. And we'll go over that in a bit and show you what clearance issues I'm talking about. So what we ended up doing was actually taking the differentials out of a Jeep, which later on I'll put some videos up about that. Um, the reason for that is because on the international and pretty much all vehicles back in the day the 4x4 setup the the transfer case was actually on this side so you would have your your pinion on your differential on the front would be you know somewhere in this area at the bottom right well on the newer stuff like this the transfer case is on that side okay so therefore it was not going to work you know because our pinion was on this side and the transfer case was on that side so you can get an adapter and that adapter what it does is it it allows you to to use the same output shaft or something like that and, and you have to get a different transfer case from like an 80s chevy and you can put it behind this um 6l80 all right so a uh, customer wanted to use the exact same transmission he wanted to keep the same transfer case and everything you know everything that came out of the 2013 so what we ended up doing is he had a jeep there at his place that he had as a, as a parts vehicle right so he asked me like is there any way maybe you can use the, the jeep differentials and I said, well, if they're the same, if they're the same width, we can, you know, uh, everything else, of course, can get modified. So what's up, Joe? What's up, guys? <laughs> and everything else can pretty much be, be modified, which we did do that. Um, we ended up getting some purchase, some, some differential purchase to where th those, the purchase are, these right here that I got at the bottom of the diff you see this tape line right there this right here is a perch it's not welded on at the at the moment uh, because we still have to set like a pinion angle um, and that's important because if that pinion angle is not uh, if that pinion angle is not correct you're gonna have a lot of vibrations uh, during your driving okay so same thing goes for the back the back one uh it's not it's not welded on it's just you know held down pretty tight with the with the u-bolts and you know that's how it's staying right now i'm gonna put like four tack welds and drive it like that once we get it road worthy to where we got brake lines run ran and, and all that stuff um I'll, I'll weld in i mean i'll uh What's that word I'm looking for? Hmm. It's all just going to be tack welded for now, okay? And the reason you want to do that is because you don't want to finalize something and then take it out for the first cruise and you end up with 
a vibration and you're like, oh damn, like I gotta, I gotta cut all of that down and start over, right? So that's why you do four little tack welds and that way if there is a vibration, you can still clock the differential and all you gotta do is, is cut those four little spot welds off, right? Um, so at this point, what we have is motor sitting in, it's already sitting on those motor mounts, which we had to modify because the the motor mounts we were having uh, issues clearing clearing the uh, the headers that we purchased. See on that side, it's real close. It's real close down up in there. And if, and if you guys are saying, oh man, all that's getting rusty again, well, it's okay because we're going to get this whole frame blasted and everything. And once it's blasted, then it'll get painted. So right now I'm really not worried about it rusting like this because it's just surface rust. It's not hurting anything, you know. Uh, another thing we had to do to set this motor in here, it's a 71 Scout. Uh, in order to get it to fit, we had to clearance the firewall, which this one I went a little bit further than I had to. Um, but I cut these out these sections they were up in there and uh, of course there'll be body work there very very minimal body work just just to get rid of like the, the grinding marks um, but all I did was cut that section out and pushed the firewall in and I had to do a relief cut right down the middle so I, I pie cut it right there pretty much or not pie cut it just just sliced it down the middle and I brought each triangle down and then I just welded it back up on this side I had to remove a lot more and that's kind of the reason why I ended up cutting so much on this side was so that it would look more even you know because you don't want to have it super pushed in on this side and then on this side over here you know like slightly just just like ever so slightly pushed out right so I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't look tacky, you know, I wanted it to kind of match. So on this side, I did have to cut a lot more. So I actually had to add a little bit of extra steel up in there. And, you know, now I got good clearance. And I just taped all that up because when you're test fitting, you want to make sure you don't hit anything or scratch up the headers that are brand new, you know. See, here we are at the bottom. Right over there, that's where our motor mounts are at. And uh, check this side out too. All right, this this is what I was talking about, clearance issues. Right over here, this right there, the, uh, the outer tie rod end, it was actually rubbing up against those stock wheels. So we had these wheels out of a Mustang and um, just put those on there and it's the same bolt pattern you know mustangs apparently and jeeps have the same bolt pattern so you know that's a fun fact right there uh this is a y-link kit from what is that company called rough stuff and pretty much they send you a big old dom tubing or actually two of them and they send you these outer tie rod ends all separate you know, and you pretty much have to do a cut to fit with everything. Um, this this gearbox is also out of that Jeep Wrangler. Man, we got some hot rodder neighbors over there. Anyway, um, this this gearbox is also out of the Jeep Wrangler, a '99. So we made that bracket. quarter inch steel I had to add some spacers also in between right here because the gearbox has a bit of a belly there I guess or you know it's rounded out so you can't just put a flat plate there you need to take up the space because if not if you just run the bolt and you leave the bolt exposed right here what's gonna end up happening is that over time this steel is gonna start to give and it's gonna start you know it's gonna start bending like that 
and it's going to eventually create these bolts to to or it's going to cause these bolts to get loose all right uh this bracket i mean it's pretty self-explanatory i guess i put these gussets on there just to ensure that when when this gearbox is under tension you know when when the steering is under tension and it's turning you know that way the gearbox doesn't want to flex you know to either direction so this is to add strength to them or to the to the L bracket because that's basically what it is it's, it's a plate here and a plate down and you know that that plate if you just leave that like that it can it could just break off you know so you need to add some some structural strength to that uh, but yeah check out this the steering system and excuse all these lines this is all for this one's for transmission for the transmission lines and this other one is the oil cooler uh, let me give you a top view of this Okay, so right there, of course, gearbox. And then we have the pitman arm, and then we run all the way across, which it gets really, really close. I don't know if you can see those two, those two bars, those two tubes. They get super close to each other, but they never, they never rub, so. So that's what's important. So let me kind of turn the wheels if I can by hand. It's gonna be a little tough, but just to give you an idea of everything, how it's moving. Well, I can't really move it too much. It's, it's too hard, but uh, Let's bring you down to the bottom. Down to the bottom so you can see the, the transmission, the way that was mounted. All right, so down here, so down here at the, at the transmission and transfer case, I actually utilized the original cross member from the Sierra. So what I ended up doing was, I, uh, I shortened it. I had to cut a section out of this side over here and it has some sleeves right in here that, uh, you know, that, that run all the way, all the way through that, through that, um, cross member so that the cross member itself doesn't get crushed when you tighten up those bolts. Right? So, what I did was I transferred it from the section that I had cut off because this was like up to here. It was way longer. So I cut off the section and I took the tube out of that section and then I drilled a hole onto, onto the bar, actually on this side because the two holes were like right here, okay? So I cut this half off and now only this one was existent. So then I drilled a hole on this side and then I ran the tube in there and then I welded the tube in and um, and, and that's how I you know achieved keeping the same cross member and then you know I made these made these plates welded them onto the frame uh, in order for you to make sure that you have everything good you actually have to mount everything the way you want it like all this was in place I had all this in place when when I welded them okay and the reason you want to do that is because if you just put these you know and you just measure them out where you want them and all that the moment you start welding what happens yeah I realize that one's loose um, what's gonna happen is that this plate these plates with the heat they're gonna start to you know warp or not warp they're gonna start to to tilt and turn and everything and by the time you're done welding you might end up with with the problem of of the cross member not wanting to go in there 
so that's why you want to leave that cross member up in there that way the the distance in here stays the same and you're able to you know make sure that it doesn't change uh, but one rule of thumb that will help you out when you're welding is always do opposites each time so say for example you're gonna weld here and do another spot weld on the top well then now do this side on the opposite side weld over here and then weld on the opposite side over here that way you know the steel is going to want to pull this way but then you weld on the other side and it pulls back and you're pulling this way and pulling it back you know that way it just evens itself out so that way you don't end up with with problems in the future and now we just gotta now we just gotta figure out a drive shaft the drive shaft from the transmitter from the transfer case over here the output shaft to to the to the back diff and also figure uh, another one for for the front over there so yeah we're gonna need to have two drive shafts made and after that you know get on to wiring and uh, and doing brake lines and fuel lines for it that way we can get it started but yeah there's there's still a considerable amount of work left on this thing um, so what we're doing is, is pretty much getting it all together getting it getting it to the to the running point and getting all the brakes done and uh, just just getting it to run you know you want you want to do your fuel lines your your brake lines your wiring drill any holes you have to drill close any holes you have to close um, because the last thing you want to do you, you do not want to you, you don't want to build the car and and then later on, you know, you, you have it all painted and everything. And then you start drilling holes because, oh man, I didn't do this. I didn't run these wires through here or whatever, you know. So, yes, it's more work because you're going to have to do everything twice. But it's the right way to do it, you know. That way you don't screw things up in the future. Uh, also, another thing you got to keep in mind is paint will add some additional size to your to your holes you know if you had a a quarter inch hole and you know you lay all your primer your paint and everything by the time you're all said and done that quarter inch hole is actually going to be smaller because the paint is going to add some thickness and henceforth it's going to close up the hole a little bit so you always want to consider those things too you know your clearance issues uh or not clearance issues but you know fitment issues that you may get in the future so you want to make sure you make up for that so anyway this video is getting long enough uh, so that's what we got going so far you know once again we set this ls motor in here it's a 5.3 uh, and we put the jeep differentials and in order to make our steering work we had to buy that that y link and, and do the custom fit um, the, the Y-Link steering is for the Jeeps, okay? And, uh, oh yeah, another thing. There is a reason why we had to put the tie rod ends on the top of the knuckle, okay? Because they are going through the very top of the knuckle. And what I mean by the knuckle is the spindle right here. That right there is a spindle, right? They also call that a, a knuckle, so... The reason we put it on top is because when we set it at the bottom, it was super, super close and it looked like it was going to hit right there, you know. Um, that made me kind of nervous, so I just said, you know what, let's let's go ahead and put it on the top, you know. That way we have a good amount of gap here and there's never going to be an issue with that. So. So yeah, stay tuned. Later on, I'll, I'll put the rest of the videos, uh, the videos of this process. There was a lot of cutting involved. You know what? Let me run you through that real quick. See here, we're inside of the scout. 
I had to clearance the floor here that panel over there is what lays on top of here so that panel is going to have to get modified more or less around where these lines are at right now I'm going to have to probably lift that up and I want to make it a bolt on um, you know I had to I had to cut a considerable amount because of the, the transfer case but I mean it, it's all real close but it's all good it, it, it clears uh, and, and you always want to remember keep in mind torsion you know um, when it's under when it's under a load you know when you're when you're hitting your gas hard you know all this stuff is gonna it's gonna it's gonna tweak a little bit you know under under a load because you don't have solid mounts you got a rubber a rubber mount so that kind of gives a little bit to reduce vibration so therefore you want to leave a little bit of extra clearance to where even if it does flex a little bit it's not going to hit the bottom of your ride you know so anyway So anyway, now I'll call it, I'll call it quits on the video. That that's long enough. I'm like at, I don't know, 20 minutes already or something like that. So, uh, thank you for watching, guys, and please subscribe to the channel. If you make us grow, we'll keep putting videos out there, you know, and and it, it's gonna be motivational for us, you know. The more subscribers we get, it, it just adds to the motivation, you know, that people actually are watching us, you know, so. So if you could do that for us, that would be awesome. Thank you very much, and you have an awesome day.